Hey guys, welcome to my very first impressions and quick guide on how to build and play with Dory, the latest electro healer added to Genshin Impact, and she hails from Sumeru. Now you can tell from the ping in the very top right corner that this is not mine, a whopping 223 ping over there. I have been very kindly invited by Hoyoverse to record and review early footage for Dory, which is why I have access and footage to her early. I don't get to keep any of this stuff on this account, so just putting that disclaimer out there, because I know I always receive comments about this asking, how did you get the update early? The game's updated already, nani? That kind of stuff, but please, don't put that in the comments. I still feel like I'm gonna get that in the comments. But without further ado, let me show you guys exactly how Dory plays. Now to do that, because she's an electro healer, we want to see her heal. Unfortunately, she's going to have to take a beating from our friend Malphite here, the lava child, but this will be over very quickly. I should have planned this ahead and cut her HP in half beforehand, but just a few more hits. I'm sorry, Dory, I'm sorry. Please don't hate me for this. She's going to heal all the way right back up very, very quickly. And I'm going to show you guys my build and my artifacts and all that good stuff in a moment as well. But I thought I would show you guys the gameplay first and the general mechanics that she has. So she's gone down to 10,000 HP. So let's go and reset that. We'll just stand here for the time being. And what I want you guys to pay attention to here is the energy for the elemental burst in the bottom right corner, as well as the healing that I'm about to reveal. So here we go, elemental burst. And we just stand here and as you can see, we've got like a line that follows us around between the Ginny here or the Ginny pot or Genie pot, but it is called the Ginny in game. And this is what's going to happen. So we've healed to full. And as you can see, we've actually gained a little bit of energy recharge as well. Our elemental burst has regained some energy. So this will apply to any of the characters that you have healing or being directly connected with that tether to the Ginny pot. Now, the thing that is also important to note here is that the healing healing was not bad at all. 5,000 over 5,000 per tick there. And we are currently sitting at 34,000 rounded up maximum HP. We have an energy recharge of 285.3, which I know is very, very high. And I'll explain to you guys the build and the artifacts that I've gone for for the time being. But those are the two main stats you want to focus on. You want to go for HP so that your healing will do a fair amount. And you want to go for energy recharge so that you can heal in the first place. This is what you're going to want. Energy recharge and maximum HP. I have personally gone for the sacrificial greatsword i think there are many alternatives you can use favonius greatsword is fine as well if you plan to go down that route and you want energy for your other members that's going to work as well and we also have the latest f2p weapon the forest regalia unfortunately i do not have the materials to level this weapon up so i couldn't really fully test this whatsoever so my recommendation for the time being is personally sacrificial greatsword but it depends on your energy recharge artifacts are for me two-piece tenacity of the middle lift and also emblem of severed fate you can go for four piece emblem if you want to that works but i think it's a bit copium and you can also go for four piece noblesse as well you can also put the healer sets on dory as well it's really down to personal preference but i would say whatever gets you the most energy recharge or hp that's what you want to be looking for for the time being we'll check the constellations later on this is currently c0 and talent levels are 169 so the reason why i have gone for sacrificial greatsword is this passive over here Composed. After damaging an opponent with an elemental skill, the skill has an 80% chance to end its own cooldown, can only occur once every 16 seconds, and then has 30.6% energy recharge, which is honestly not very high. You can get much higher than that with other weapons, but the main thing is this passive here, which allows you to refresh the cooldown and allow you to use it back to back. And this will go hand in hand. I'm going to turn off my webcam here so you guys can see what this does here with compound interest, this talent over here. So to simplify what this says, so what this means is when you use Dory's elemental skill once here, you can see it then explodes into two homing missiles right after that. So I'll do it again in three seconds here so this first shot actually has the possibility of missing because it doesn't go very far and then you see though those two homing missiles coming out after that so we'll call that part one and part two of the elemental skill so with this one if part one or part two if either part one or part two hits the enemy using your elemental skill skill dory will restore five elemental energy for every 100 percent energy recharge stat possessed now i'm not 100 percent certain if it has to be a fixed 100 percent so it only goes 100 percent 200 percent 300 percent or if it scales i'm hoping that it scales 
but we will find out when the more competent theory crafters do their job, unlike myself. But then you can see here, per spirit warding lamp, so per elemental skill usage, only one instance of energy restoration can be triggered and a maximum of 15 energy can be restored this way. So what does this mean? This means for every single elemental skill you use, if you have 100% energy recharge, you will restore five elemental energy for Dory for her elemental burst. If you have 200%, you'll restore 10. And if you have 300%, you'll restore 15 each time. Meaning if you have 300% and you use Sacrificial Greatsword, you can get 30 energy back instantly and that doesn't include the particles that you're going to get from dory as well so if we do here hopefully we get the proc off here right we do and this should pretty much take us up to almost full so we got a little bit unlucky on the energy particle regeneration so we're one short there but if i had 300 percent energy recharge there guys you can see that i would have instantly regained my elemental burst back which would have been very very nice and her elemental burst is 80 cost so that is quite high on the high end of things that's something you might want to keep in mind as well. That high energy cost is, of course, going to play into Raiden as well. There's many different characters that work very nicely with Dory. Now, the other thing that you can do with Dory is, of course, a lot of electro application. So I'm going to drop this here and then I'm going to drop this here. So as you can see, I have the tether in between me right now. And you can see the crazy amount of damage that the tether is doing. Now, while you have this tether on you, which doesn't mean you have to be touching your opponent, you don't have to have the opponent in between the tether what that means is you will also have electro applied to you which is both a good and a bad thing and more often than not it's probably a bad thing and the reason i say that is because when you have an element applied to you like that it means enemies can react on you very easy. If you, for example, have a put Bennett and Dory's ultimates or elemental burst on top of each other, here's footage of it here, you are actually able to overload yourself without taking damage while striking damage to your enemy, which I think is pretty interesting, but who knows what that means? I don't know who needs to have the elemental mastery here, but for those of you who are smart enough to understand it, there you go. That interaction does actually work. So in terms of application of Electro, I I would say that's Dory's one weaker point. If you are going against larger enemies or if you are going against difficult enemies like the Lava Child that can fling you around or they can knock you around, if you don't have characters like Razor or Ito or Yula who can put, or even Singcho who can apply super armor or poise, which means you don't get staggered and knocked back all the time, it's going to be kind of hard to maintain this because as you can see, if, well, Dory was short there, so she literally just went through his legs. But if I get knocked back here, I'm no longer healing because I'm too far away from the Jin Lamp. So that is the one major downside of playing with Dory is that is a tiny, tiny little bit tedious. But outside of that, I think she is quite, quite good. Lots of good healing. The energy recharge passive is very, very nice. And I do think, I do think that... This may or may not play into potential future characters that are on field DPS. Now, I don't know what certain characters may or may not do, but I have a feeling because so far from Sumeru, the characters we've got, we haven't really got an on field long term DPS. Like, for example, this character over here, young Razore, we also don't have a Dendro DPS character, and if you have any understanding of Dendro and Electro, they work very nicely together, along with Hydro as well, but Dendro and Electro go very, very nicely together. So what I'm suggesting here, guys, is that Dory is going to be the main support character for the Dendro DPS we may or may not be getting in the future. I don't know. That's just my speculation. Now, the other thing that Dory, I think, is going to be very good for, because she recharges energy, and what happens when you have an on-field DPS character, let's say for Razor, who wants to take the field for a long time, meaning you don't recharge much, much energy, energy through particles because he doesn't generate many particles in his elemental burst well dory's gonna help with that if you have double electro well double electro gives you this very oop razor's dead but before we got absolutely obliterated what i wanted to say was double electro provides a very very nice electro resonance for energy recharge which gives you this. 
So affected by hydro for 40% less time, superconduct, overloaded, electrocharge, quicken, aggravate, or hyperbloom have a 100% chance to generate an electroelemental particle. Cool down five seconds. Now again, hypothetically speaking, if we have an on-field DPS character that lasts for longer than 10 seconds, maybe someone like Young Razore, maybe someone that plays similarly to Young Razore, and they stay on the field for more than 10 seconds, that's two particles already. Now, when you do Electro and Dendro together, that also generates a particle when you do that reaction. And then if you put Thundering Fury on top of that, you're going to have really nice elemental skill cooldown and you're going to have Dory recharging your energy while healing you at the same time while you have super armor, meaning you can't be knocked around so easily. So hypothetically speaking, I'm just saying that Dory may or may not be a very useful character to have for certain other future characters who I cannot, cannot confirm are going to be good with Dory. I don't know. I have no idea, guys, but it's speculative. Speculation. I'm sure at some point we are going to be getting a Dendro DPS, especially that's going to appreciate having Dory in the team. Now, let's recharge our energy here. All right. Thank you. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, give me all of that back. Thank you. Let's do this. We've got three sacrificial weapons here to give us all these particles. Right. Let's do that. And let's do this again. Give me my energy back, please. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Razor's so close. He's so close, but he's not there yet. Okay, thank you. And thank you. And thank you. And thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, everyone's energy is back. So, play Star Wars. I'll go over to Masanori and show you guys a more practical usage of the team comp that I have on the side here. Which, again, may or may not be a team comp worth running in the future. Now, I personally think there are much better team comps than this. But I think this one is going to be particularly fun and easily accessible to a lot of people. So, what are we going to do here? We're going to go up to Masanori and we are going to fight. Now, cooldowns wise and also characters wise, my Razor is not great. This is the build I'm using right now. Desperate times call for desperate measures, guys. It is what it is. I, I know it's not great. We are using the Pain Slasher at level 80. Artifacts, we have got Thundering Fury. And the crit, <laughs> crit rate and crit damage ratio is a bit copium. The attack is not great. Energy recharge is okay. But Thundering Fury is here. And the point of this is to show that the damage is not terrible, even with this terrible build, and also this terrible Sing Cho that we're running as well. Level 70 out of 80, terrible attack, crit rate, crit damage is awful, energy recharge is up there, but as you can see, this is not optimal for the characters that I'm running. Talent levels, by the way, for Sing Cho are 1, 9, 10, and then we have 9, 12, 12 over here, Dory's 1, 6, 9, and we got 1, 6, 6 on the Dendro Traveler. But what we're going to try and do here is demonstrate that super armor as well as having the healing on top is going to be very, very, very nice. So first thing is first. I think we should start with this. Boom. And then, oh, we didn't prop. That's fine. And unfortunately, the Ginny has gone the wrong way, which is whatever. That's whatever. And then we'll do this. And then we got Quicken and Aggravate. Right, so with that, as you can see, Razor's E cooldown is refreshing very, very quickly, which is very, very nice. So we got the higher cooldown here. And with the reactions, you can see that it refreshes a lot quicker. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, we're taking a lot of damage here, but we're still healing. We got the super armor coming through. Okay, very nice. And again, very nice. Okay. And I want this, and I'm going to wait for the healing to come through again, for our elemental burst to come through. One more time. All right, all right, all right. Do I wait for Sing Cho? We'll wait for Sing Cho here. We'll wait for Sing Cho's elemental burst to come back here. One, and then two. As you can see, we do no damage. All right, he's going to charge. We're going to drop this. We're going to drop this. And then we're going to drop this. So, boom. 
Right, Razor's cooldowns. Pay attention to Razor's cooldown over here. So right now, 7 second cooldown. We were able to refresh it. Oh, he's dead already. But you can see when it refreshes. So this is a composition. If you have a Thundering Fury main DPS character. And you don't have a shielder for that main DPS character. And you rather go with a healer that also gives you energy recharge. Or recharges your elemental burst while you're ulting. I think that Dory has some nice potential. But well, yes, that is my thoughts on Dory. My first impressions. We go to the constellations. Let's take a look. I will disable my webcam so you can read the description. The number of after sales service rounds created by troubleshooter shots is increased by one. So instead of getting two secondary shots in the second phase of the elemental skill, you're now going to get three, which is really nice for energy recharge because they do proc energy recharge. This would mean with my personal, you know what, I'm just gonna activate it and I will show you guys, all right? I will show you guys over here. If we go all the way back over to Malphite, this should be enough to instantly, if I get the sacrificial proc, this should be enough to instantly take me back to maximum energy and uh, means I need even less energy recharge stat and I can put it more into HP. So as you can see, all of those generate elemental particles. Even the homing missiles do as well. Oh, just a little bit too shy. You hate to see it. That was Constellation 1 though. So once again, the number of after sales service rounds created by troubleshooter shots is increased by 1. So, you know what? Let me... Let me get my burst back for Dory. Okay, so Dory has her burst back. That's fine. And I'm gonna... I'm gonna put this down. And then I'm gonna E. And then I'm gonna E again and see how much... And just like that, guys. My elemental burst is already back. So that's very, very nice. Thank you very much. You love to see that. And then next constellation, I wonder if we can activate constellation in the middle of combat. When you are in combat and the Ginny heals the character it is connected to, it will fire a Ginny tube from that character's position that deals 50% of Dory's attack damage. So I need to be actively healing here. So if you're already at full HP, this is not going to do anything. So I think Dory's still taking damage, but the Ginny has disappeared. So we'll just wait for that to reappear. Okay, so Dory is not at full HP, but that's fine. We can change that. Okay, so we'll do this, and we'll do this, and we will do this. Now, this is not full HP. Ooh, now the thing I'm trying to see here, guys, is when it fires something off, does it produce an elemental particle? Because if it does... That will be very, very useful. So we're going to drop this. Actually, I need more people to take more damage. So we have longer time of healing. Okay, perfect. So I'll drop that down. Okay. Does that generate a particle? Ah, it does not generate a particle. Okay, so if it doesn't generate a particle, all it's doing is applying another instance of Electro, which is still useful. That's still useful. So this constellation will apply another instance of Electro, which is nice. And I'm not sure how the internal cooldown works for that. If it does not have internal cooldown, then that's actually very, very, very good. But in terms of damage, it's not really going to do any damage. This is just going to give you more of more scaling, essentially more healing. And then this will be the character connected to a Ginny will obtain the following buffs based on their current HP and energy. This one I think is really good. When their HP is lower than 50%, they gain 50% incoming healing bonus. So instead of healing 5,000, I'll be healing, I think, 7,500, which I think is really good. And when their energy is less than 50%, they gain 30% energy recharge, which is really, really good. Especially if your character has a really high energy cost. Oh boy, that is tasty. So that's a very nice one to have. And then we have increases the level of the Spirit Warding Lamp. So this is just going to increase your elemental skill damage. And then we have Constellation 6, which kind of changes her completely. Which is Dory gains the following effects for 3 seconds after using her elemental skill. And this will allow her to have Electro Infusion on her normal attacks. And when her normal attacks hit opponents, all nearby party members will heal HP equivalent to 4% of Dory's maximum HP. 
This type of healing can occur once every 0.1 seconds. So this is going to be similar to Noel gameplay or Gene gameplay, where you're using normal attacks to actively heal your characters. So let us do this and we will do this. And now I have electro infused attacks, which you can see, oh, the healing is actually pretty good. That was fast. Now I have to say that was pretty fast. Okay, you know what? Let's take a lot of damage and see how quick that really was, okay? Finish me. Finish me. Young Razore. Boom. Okay, okay, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die. Don't die, don't die, don't die, okay. Okay, okay, stop, 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 stop. Okay. We'll, we'll put this on. Okay, and we'll do this. And let's see how fast Razor heals. Oh my guys, I have to say that is not bad at all. That is not bad at all. And then, obviously, if you have... If you have the... Sorry, my brain just farted there. If you have the Sacrificial Greatsword, you can reapply that and you can have 6 seconds of normal attack healing as opposed to just 3 seconds. So I do think Sacrificial Greatsword is going to be a nice weapon to have on Dory, especially if, have, if you have her at C6. And of course, when you have an attack animation that looks like this... One of the best, if not the best in the game. I have to say, I absolutely love it. It's so cute. It's so cute. Look at this attack animation. It's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. So that, that would be nice. Now, the thing with the elemental skill before I end the video is if you miss the first instance like that, these missiles, if the enemy is in range, will still home in on the enemy and try to hit them. So let me show you an instance of that, right? So that misses, as you see, the first instant missed, but the other ones didn't, and you could see the energy particles coming through there from the additional instances that were just dropped. So let me drop that again. That actually hit that time. And then you see all the additional particles coming through as well. And you can see this constellation is not actually giving me any additional particles. It's just consistently applying Electro, which again, is probably going to be nice for a future Dendro character that may or may not be a damage dealer. So Dory, for me, I think potentially fills in a lot of gaps. Obviously, Shinobu is another Electro healer, but I just want to say it's great that we have Electro healers now. And overall, I think Dory is a pretty good four-star character. And again, there's many ways to build her. And because she's a healer that requires energy recharge, it's pretty straightforward. Most healers require energy recharge and HP percent or healing bonus. It's pretty much the same with Dory. Nothing quirky going on there. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Those are my first impressions and thoughts on how to build Dory. Thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day and bye-bye.